Okay, so this is the WASC Summer Faculty Development Week, and this is a cybersecurity update. Now, the first issue I'd like to mention is many people say we have a very diverse class, and this is exactly what happens to me in my college classes as well. As a matter of fact, it also happens to me in my corporate consulting which I had not anticipated, is the class is got people who are real beginners and people who are really quite advanced. And this is why the cybersecurity community has pretty much standardized on capture the flag contests as the way to learn. For this reason, a capture the flag contest means that nobody has to be bored or overwhelmed. You each, you choose your own level. So what we've got is a lot of topics we're going to cover here. But I'm not going to be lecturing and explaining them where everybody has to be together. I'll demonstrate the important projects so that even if there's some technique you don't feel up to doing yourself, you have an opportunity to see it. But you can choose what level you want to, to study at. So for example, if you take, say, digital forensics, which is the official topic for today, if you click on this, you'll find a page. Yes, a little bit slow when I'm streaming. All right. And... Uh, Oh, ignore that scoreboard. That shouldn't be there. I'll take that off. In fact, I thought I had taken that off. Let me just try refreshing this page. Anyway, um, and so down here there are challenges. And you choose what challenges you want to solve. First, you have to set up, there's binary, where you can just practice learning binary if you like. Then you have to set up a server of some kind. And then we're using autopsy because we don't have the money to pay for the more expensive tools like FTK and NCASE that are used in forensics. And you just use this product called autopsy to analyze various kinds of computer evidence. And then there are other tools down here that we talk about. So there's various projects to solve. And so if you, for example, set up a Windows server, then this one shows you how to set up a Windows server on Azure. And after you do that, then you get a flag. So at the end of the project, you'll see surrounded by a green border, a command you issue, which gives you a flag, which is covered by a green box. And you submit that in a scoreboard. And the scoreboard is back on the home page. There's a place at the top to submit flags. So you go here and you choose which challenge you have solved and submit a flag. And then you get on the scoreboard after you uh, when so you can keep track of how people are doing. And that's, people often find this to be fun and the competition is interesting and such. And the point is, if you're a beginner, you just do the easier challenges in each section or just one or two sections that are of greatest interest to you. And if you're advanced, you might skip over whole topics. Like I mentioned before, there are several people here that are actually teaching autop um, forensics and they might skip over some or all of my forensics materials. Anyway, I should mention when I teach, when I take workshops like this, I usually am not interested in learning 100% of whatever they're presenting because it's not really exactly my main focus. What I'm hoping is to pick two or three hands-on projects out of whatever they train me and put it in my class. And this is all intended to facilitate that process. I don't expect anybody to cover all this material or care about all of it. I'm hoping each of you will find a few things that are useful to you. And uh, I will record all these. I'll demonstrate many of these projects. And I'll make this video here. We'll get us started. And I'll just have a lineup of YouTube videos here with videos of all these. And after the class, all these materials will remain available. And the scoreboard will keep running. So you can just use it the way it is in your class if you want to. You can send your students here. And they can solve it. And there'll be a scoreboard there for you to grade them. You can do it that way if you like. Uh, so that's the general layout of the class. And there's one other issue I should mention, which is I'm breaking the rules already. They announced the topics of this class, but about two months ago, machine learning hit all the press. And I started looking at it, and I said, you know, I told all my students, this is worth extra credit in all of my classes. This is more important than anything in any of the classes I'm teaching you. This is the next thing people are raving about, how incredibly important this is, and I agree. And I was very charmed as I started studying machine learning, which I did a little bit of it a couple of years ago and a lot more now to discover that I did this 35 or 40 years ago in an incredibly more primitive time when it didn't accomplish much. I recognize it. And anyway, the machine learning is, is right here. And I think I'll probably start with that today as the and uh, it's not on my official list of topics, but I think it's very important and it's very easy. You can do a lot of this 
with no computer skills at all. So I'm going to do a couple demonstrations there and uh, then we'll carry on from that. So I'm going to stop this recording. That's the introduction.